Canon's EOS C100 is a professional graded cinema camera designed to deliver stunning visuals with intuitive controls. Let's take a quick tour of the essential buttons to help you capture the perfect shot. This is Canon's C100 buttons explained in 8 minutes. Starting with the menu button, providing access to the camera's full array of settings and features. 1 through 6 is your basic playback buttons. Each custom button can be assigned to special functions for quick access, tailoring the camera to your shooting needs. I set button number 7 to take a photo. Yes, you can take photos with this actual camera. Button number 8 is set to magnification. The focus magnification button allows you to zoom in on your shot, assuring the perfect focus every time. Next we have memory card slot selection. You can select B or A or A or B. We also have the display button, which displays all your information on the screen. Next up, we have the index button. If you needed to just take a quick look at the footage just to see what it looks like. Next, we have focus map. Button number nine, peaking button helps you assure the sharp focus with ease. I have mine set to yellow, but you can go into the menu and change this to your likings under the LCD. Peaking, I'm using peaking one. So the color is yellow. We're going to switch it to red. Peaking on, peaking off. There's some other colors here. You have blue, white. I'm going to turn mine back to yellow. Okay, we have button number 10, which is zebras or zebras. This is a great feature as well. By pressing on that button, it'll bring up these actual stripes. Now, these stripes indicate that things might be a little bit too bright in the areas. So, what we're going to do, we're going to use the button on our grip handle to adjust our aperture. And we're going to brighten things up. We're at 2.8. And then, as you can see, things are pretty bright. So... We want to adjust things back down, adjusting our aperture, and also keep an eye on our bar meter to get things just about where they need to be. And we're at 5.6. This looks good. And here's what it looks like. Moving right along. So button number 11, which is waveform monitors. This is a great way to check your image just to make sure things aren't too bright, your shadows aren't crushed. So, we're going to crush these shadows down. Watch the image on the screen. And as you can see, things are really dark. You don't want an image like this. There's no real details in the background. Um, and actual, the foreground is crushed. So, we're going to brighten things back up to normal. Watching our bar meter, getting things back to normal. We're at f-stop 6.3. And things look pretty good. So, we're going to leave it. Here's what the image looks like. Push the auto iris. By pressing this button, your camera will adjust your f-stop to what it believes is the right amount of light for your sensor to capture that perfect video. Alrighty, we have button number 13, which is ISO gain. Now I'm set to 850. As you can see, the image is pretty dark, but if I need to add some more light, I can pump up my ISO. Now, I wouldn't push this too far, but here's what it looks like when we go up to about 4,000. As you can see, the video looking pretty decent. Alrighty, button number 14 is shutter. I have my shutter set to 148th of a second. Now, they say the rule to video is to double your frame rate. I'm shooting at 24 frames, so I would set my shutter to 140th of a second giving you just the right amount of blur for the cinematic look. Button number 15 is one stop AF. By pressing and holding button 15, your camera will adjust and lock in your focus. So my Canon C100 has a dual pixel autofocus upgrade. So if I go into the actual menu and over the camera into AF mode, I can switch it from one shot to continuous. Now, 
if anything so happened to come in front of my screen, the camera would do its best to adjust and bring things back into focus. Okay, so we have status button. If you press on that button, there's about 10 pages. Bringing these pages up will give you detail about what your settings are on your camera. This is very useful, y'all. All right, let's set our white balance. I'm using a white card. I'm gonna place that in front of my screen and I'm gonna press on custom white balance. Now, as you can see, it's setting it to 4,900 Kelvin. Now, this is what it looks like. Now, if we press on preset white balance, we have an option. Now, it's on automatic white balance. I don't recommend using this. If for some reason your lighting change, it can ruin your image. So, we're going to click on and go over to K. We're at 4,800 Kelvin. We're gonna boost things up. The higher up you go, the warmer things will get, but we're gonna bring things back down. And as you can see, things are cooling down and turning a little bit more blue. So, if you need to set it yourself, you can do that as well. We have sun, and then we have fluorescent lighting. We have custom picture. This is perfect if you like to do your own color grading. There's quite a few options here. We have YDR, Cinema. C1 through 6, you can customize to your likings. This is very useful if you need to shoot a flat image and you like to do your own color grading. I'm going to leave mine on the uh, standard because I will not be doing any color grading for this tutorial. Button number seven, I have it customized to take a photo. So for me, if I needed to get some information off a business card, maybe a birthday card, this is useful. It'll save a JPEG for me. All I would need to do is import it into post and I can get all the information I need. This concludes this eight minute tutorial. Thanks for watching. My name's Andre. I'm a content creator. Been creating content for quite some time now and I enjoy everything about it. Please subscribe and leave those comments. Until the next one, y'all, remember to capture those moments and do the best with what you have. Okay, peace.